Let's go, Domo. Do you need a breather? It's okay. I'm fine. I just, I drank sure? wrong. That was not a smart yeah. idea. Yeah. I'm not a very smart man, but I know how to bingus. Uh, oh, yeah. We have Lance Axe on the board, so that's pretty cool. Okay. We have a Give Bach his needle back, which I think every player who gets that wins. Is that a correct fact? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, what was that question one more time? <laughs> Domo, it's okay if you need to go oh, take a second. Oh, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> right, I'm yeah, yeah, I've been looking bread stats. Yeah, that is correct. For this season, if someone has given Bach needle back, they have won the game, which is a really interesting fact. Um, so that's a cool one. BBK has been in a lot of games recently. That's that's not a, that's not a bad square. Um, I do like Earth Tree avatars because there's so many to pick from, and it's just cool to see what the synergy is. Uh, I, I am I am a fan of Tunnel and Precipice Dungeon because I usually like to consider the Magma Worm one for that because there's just a lot you can do with that. Um, not really here. There's not much Altus stuff here. It looks like there is Raya's Hand and there is an Altus Plateau Hero's Grace. Is that it? No, okay. I, I, I kind of agree so, with that. That's, that's definitely... I do wonder if they're going to try and... Uh, going to try and do Makar maybe as like one of their... Their moves, uh, I think you already mentioned that. But I do want to see um, who is going to do Godric's Great Rune because you do have both of them on the diagonal, uh, Nefeli Lu and Godric. So right, uh, that will right. be, be something very interesting. Oh, what's going on? I'm dying. <laughs> Holy shit. Hold on. Um, yeah, take a minute. I'll, I'll hold a fort down. Okay, guys, we also have kill a remembrance boss bow only, which is crazy because that bow onlys aren't very fun to do unless it's against Godric. However, we do have Godric while summoning Nefeli Lu, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see someone um, like kind of what Aggie did last match, leave Godric open for the bow only until the end of the game. That would be kind of a fun little thing. Um, I'm not sure really what will happen until then, but that would be cool if, if we saw that again. Um, and here we go. Let's let's both picking different classes, it. by the way. Cross Naginata for Catalyst. And then also Dark Moon Greatsword for Pump. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Step sorry. off screen, do what you have to do. I got this, guys. I got this. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, I didn't see what class it is. I can't do that part, but we're good. We're both going. Pup is purple. Love to see that. Um, Kata looks... Oh, wait. He's a little bit ahead on my screens, but uh, he looks just like barely ahead. Nice. Uh, are you there? <laughs> Welcome back, Domo. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Grafted Scion. All right. Yeah, we didn't do Grafted Scions. It's not on the board. Um... We have, what else do we have? We have Moog Sewer. Oh, we never have Moog non-sewer. We never have Moog above ground, which is a little sad, but that's okay. I think um, we saw him once maybe this season, but that's about it. Sag. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Horus bosses. Okay, I'm a big fan of like the kill this many bosses of this type or whatever. I That's maybe why I like the last match so much. I think those are so fun. There is so much you can do with it. It's so simple. It's just boss rush, boss rush, get a good weapon and go for it. Those are so fun to me. I'd like to see some of that again. Um, Sacred Flask plus seven. That's not a bad one, I guess. That's a... That is the churches, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And here we also have Falling Star Beast, by the way, on the board, which uh, it yes. does kind of work into uh, tunnels. Um, so if you go for Falling Star Beast and then maybe Makar, it might be a little bit of a risky thing because it does take a while to get to Makar. Uh, but. Oh, there we go. That worked. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry, my eyes are watering so much right now. Dude, get some more water. But like, I think if you like if you just drink water, it'll fix the first time that you drink water just incorrectly. Oh, know? really? Oh. I, was like, I, I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay. okay. I okay. think I'm fine. Uh, but thank you. Um, but yeah, it looks like that there. Okay, so it looks like that Catalyst is actually going for the gatekeep front and then uh, Pup going for, in this case, uh, Aguil Lake North. So that kind of maybe indicates that Pup is going for Bach Needle here. 
And I think Catalyst is seeing that Godric's Great Rune and Godric Nefeli Lu combo on the same diagonal. So I think he might just try and force that. And he's got the broadsword yeah. on top of that, which is really, really nice because it's got square off on that. So We do have the Hero Grave. Uh, I don't think the players really suffer on that, but it's still a little bit like... I always feel like a dagger in my heart when I see that one. It's just like, I don't like this. It's not fun. It's not cool. There's lava. It's an Altus. I don't like that one. Um, I'm sure the players don't feel like that, but personally, I do not love that square. It, it can be, uh, you know, meh is probably the best way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. It's yeah, not nothing fun, fun about that one. Yeah. No. But uh, uh, yeah, it looks like that. I know they're both not checking. Oh, so at least Catalyst didn't check the uh, Great Sword chest here, which he normally does, I believe, or at least I do. I think most players do, because it is yeah. a, a a great check. It looks like that pup might go for that check here, um, and might also pay off here with Alabaster's Lord Sword. Pausing. Nope, it is white. Oh no, that is purple. Inseparable blade or sword. That is not a good weapon. Um. I guess she's not going for Bach, though, in this case. She's kind of surprising because she does have the Spiked Club. And she had the a closer grace to Bach. But I guess she maybe sees the combo now with Godric and mm -hmm. Godric's Great Rune. That they're both going to be racing, I guess, in this situation. Yeah. Yeah, so if they're... I mean, the cat is a little bit ahead. Assuming there are no market incidences or anything, I guess it would just come down to damage. Uh, which... I'm not what so what is uh, Kata using there? Uh that is the I think it's just the broadsword. Okay, and square off is a great uh oh, it's not Ash broadsword. War. Sorry. But yeah, it's it's a, it's a sword. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um and square off is is good for uh <clears throat> posture damage if I remember correctly. Yeah, right? yeah, that's, it does 40 poise. Yeah. yeah. It does 40 okay. poise per square off here. So uh, two of those will stagger Margaret in this case. Uh, mm -hmm. Does miss the second square off here, but does get a really good move here on Margit to where he can just yep. go for uh, another square off. Uh, gets the stagger, gets the repost here. Um, yeah, it's not the broadsword, but it's uh, it's just a knight sword, I want to say. Um, but it's a straight sword. It's, pretty, it's, like, it's just a basic straight sword, um, pretty much. Gets another uh, square off combo. And uh, has a huge head start here, especially because... Yeah. Pup doesn't have score off. She does have the spike club though, which means that she will have a bleed proc that might help her out with catching up a little bit. But Kata does have the advantage here right now. Right. Um, however, if they're both going to be summoning the Feli Lu, it, it does kind of make a lot of RNG in that fight because a lot of times you'll get some insane hitboxes when you have Nefeli Lu, especially if you have low health bar. Mm. Um, yeah, like you can be great, but. But if Godric does, like, sometimes he'll be attacking the Lu and then just turn to you at the very last second, which is not really the vibe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so you know, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't super matter if Kata is a little bit ahead on that. Um, just because if you're summoning the Lu, you don't have a completely scripted fight or anything like that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely going to be interesting to see. But the problem is that Kata probably has at least... I want to say two minute head start right now. Yeah. So even if even if that does come into play, he's still gonna have a head start on everything right now uh, for that diagonal yeah. compared to pup. She did get one bleed proc here. She should get another one here soon. Yeah. Unfortunately, her damage isn't great. Um. Yeah. What's the Ash of War? The barbaric roar? That just a buff? Yeah. Uh, so it's a it's a Ash of War that uh, gives you a little bit of extra attack damage, but also it changes your R two. To where it's not a single swing, but is kind of like a four-hit combo instead. Uh, it's really yes. annoying. It's not great in any way. Okay. Um, I don't think it's ever been useful, to be honest. I'd never use it. I only use Barbaric Roar if I know I'm going to be R1 spamming on a boss, because then I want that extra attack damage from yeah. the Ash of War. And then just R1 constantly. Or so why do you think uh, Pup would have gone for that class instead of the same one as Kata? If this weapon is just like a nice, simple, easy to use sword, I'm not too sure. Maybe she just saw the Dark Moon Great Sword. Uh, yeah. To be honest, and I was like, "Hey, let me go for that because it's a really strong weapon." But the requirements for Dark Moon Great Sword are extremely high. Yes. Um, so I'm not. I'm not too sure. Yeah. 
Whatever, maybe she maybe she's cooking something. Yeah, dude, people have been cooking all day. I'm not. Uh... People have been cooking, dude. Oh, not. Oh, I think. <laughs> Let me just uh, fix that real quick. All right, Pup is talking to Melina, guys. Don't worry, I got you. She's talking and she's talking. <laughs> Twitch being oh. Twitch, that's my favorite. Wait, I'm behind now too. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, we're looking at uh, next season having a bit more of a reliable source of watching players. So. Yeah, I mean, this it's not so bad. I mean, like something weird happens every once in a while, but I think it's bearable. Yeah. There we go, though. Uh, Secluded yeah. Cell already for Catalyst. I already talked to Nefeli Lu, I believe, as well. Yeah, he did. So he's got a um, huge head start here. Yeah, and he's got some nice damage. But yeah, we'll see what happens with Nefeli Lu. Sometimes Godric will do that, like, fire grab and then push her to the ground. And then you're like, okay, great. I'm kind of safe for now. And then the fire will just spray everywhere and kill you, even if you're on the other side of the arena. <laughs> so, like, mm -hmm. so, you know, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I mean,. I'll likely get it, but you never know with the with the summons. Yeah, it's also like the fun part is when you summon for a boss fight and you forget to de all the stuff outside, and so the summon's just yes. staring at the door. You're yeah, like, can you Bofa, please on both a spirit ash situation? Hey, help me out, please. I I, mm -hmm. I, need, I summoned you for a reason. Yeah. So Nefeli Lou looks like she's not interested in the fight. Love to see it. I mean, Godric is a big man. If you look at him, he is he is uh, uh, the culmination of about 10 people, I would say. Standing oh, yeah. tall, about 9 feet tall. I would be scared. I mean, look at our character. We're, like, we're, we have to literally break our neck looking up at this guy. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't run in right away either. I'd be a little terrified. Huh. What? What? I think the Feli Lou's got it. I think she's a strong woman. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Okay. That's not what I meant. I just said he was tall. Uh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, but Nefeli Lou here, not currently on Pup's screen. Yeah, she just got hit by like the wind or something. That's insane. <laughs> That's so unfortunate. In a, in a race, that is so unfortunate. Yeah, the troll does get annoyed here. But it looks like that Pup actually didn't do all the dialogue for Nefeli Lou. Oh, no. She has to go back and talk what? to Nefeli Lou again. You have to do all the whole conversation. I think she only Yikes. did for the first prompt. Oh, that hurts when that happens. It sucks. And she's like, okay, you know what? It's not even worth it for me to try and even do this anymore. I'm probably going to be behind if I run back. I'm just going to go for Buck. I think that's a great call. That's a great move. Yeah, it, it's not a... Like, I think I think that's good that she wouldn't have contested that because she knows that, that Kata would have got it. However, now she has to consider what she'll block in that diagonal instead. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, which I guess depends on what her plan is, but it seems like the easiest thing would just be the Tunnel of Precipice Dungeon. Um, but I guess we'll see. Going for Bach a, here. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, Kat is he's doing fine, but it just is unfortunate that the damage is, is... Like, it's a slow fight, for sure. I mean, it doesn't really matter because Pup isn't contesting it, but yeah, it's a slow fight, for sure. Yeah, yep. Uh, this also definitely saves Pup a lot of time, though, because we did mention yeah. that you can't actually quit out on uh, fights that you summon. So she would have to either jump off the edge or just finish the fight. Uh, but for her, it, it, inconveniently, conveniently, not having the Nefeli dialogue, she pivoted off of it sooner. Yeah. So she's able to do a lot of these other checks and yeah. uh, prep the board uh, quicker than if she d was in the middle of the fight and then had to pivot off, you know? Yeah, that actually really worked out for her. I wonder... I wonder... Uh, we should tell her later that that was a blessing in disguise for her. Yeah. She did a quick weapon check there. They had Royal Greatsword, uh, Blythe's weapon, but also Venomous Fangs, which is a really, really, really good early on weapon. has uh, Deadly Poison on it. It's got Quick Step. It's, uh, it's pretty Ooh. nice. It's not bad. It, and honestly, it's almost better than the Spike Club in this case. But uh, the Spike Club having bleed it does help it a lot. Summon here. It just has poison yeah. on it. Like, just it'll just poison the person? Yep. It has deadly default. poison. Not just poison. It has, ah. So deadly poison uh, ticks twice as fast as normal poison does, Ooh. but lasts, uh, it lasts a third of the length. So it does okay. about the same. So normal poison technically does more damage than deadly poison does, but deadly poison ticks faster. So you can get it uh, procced uh, more often. Um, so that's mm -hmm. kind of a cool thing. But if you want to make it things really interesting is you can actually take an Ash of War 
and get the black wet blade and, or get um, uh, like a poison ash of war and put that on the venomous fangs and it will acquire the same duration as normal poison but have deadly poison on top of that so oh, it'll have like it'll have triple the duration but still be deadly poison uh, it's a yeah. it's a really really nice combo yeah interesting so yeah and uh, okay yeah cat is going here for the great rune and and pup is um is she doing this for the cave uh, box needle here. Uh, she's doing oh, that. Oh right, um, right. And but she also gets cave out of this, right? Is there a cave the one? Two, yeah, there is a creek. There's cave and grotto. I'm, oh, I am blind. It is column yeah. five. Yeah, I was looking at the tunnel one the whole time. Yeah, the cave and grotto one. Yeah, that would work towards that yep. too. So she'd go for yep, both yep, right yep. afterwards if she really wants to. Yeah. Um, very nice move on her end there. This is such a weird fight. <laughs> this boss is so weird to me. It's a it. Uh, this is actually the first boss fight that I uh, that I really? did in Elden Ring when I first played this game. Yeah, like the thing uh, when you first load in, and you open up the 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 door. I yeah. didn't even get to the uh, Church of L.A. Oh, really? First, I just went straight left, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna see what's over here first, and mm -hmm. uh, bumped into the, into this fight, and I had a really hard time for quite yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah, my first boss was the uh, um, that that uh, Urtree cat or whatever it's called. Urtree oh, watchdog. the watchdog. Okay. The one just straight ahead of Kale's, yeah. Yeah, it's so weird uh, thinking back of playing this for the first time and like now where you pretty much know the yeah. game inside and out, you know. Oh my god, it's crazy, yeah. Um, okay, so here's Pup. She's doing the Cave of Knowledge. A little bit of a long one, but I guess it's reliable. Right? Nothing really yeah. weird or whatever. Uh, um, no consumables on the board either. No ashes of, or mm -hmm. not, uh, no summons. So she can just go ahead and just kill him right away. That There's not really much else to, like, consider yeah. beyond just killing Godric right away, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, it gives her, it gives her already a block on column five, which is really cool. Mm hmm Uh, yeah, I wonder why she wouldn't do Bofa, though. I feel like Bofa's just easier and faster, but maybe she didn't have a grace around it, so it wouldn't have... <clears throat> It would have been just longer anyway. Yeah, I believe she did um, skip uh, the Church of L.A. Grace. Uh, okay. She just went straight for that uh, Gill Lake North Square. Uh, or yeah, that makes Grace, sense sorry. then. Um, this would be Catalyst Second Grace, or Second Square. Oh, what the hell is going on? Second Square here, <laughs> uh, going for the diagonal. Um, already kind of a threat if you think about it, because uh, all she would have is Heroes, Grave, uh, Moog Sewers, and also Tunnels. Yeah. So lots of Alta stuff, uh, yeah. except for the middle square. Right. So I guess, well, ideally you want to do the tunnel into Altus to get the access. That That's probably the fastest she could do as long as she can kill Makar easily, mm -hmm. which she probably can do. It's not a very crazy boss, especially if you have bleed. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would say that's probably be sorry. That's probably better than the hero's grave, right? Uh, it would be as just like you know holding on to tunnels all the way up until Makar is a little yeah. nerve wracking. But I do think it would be a good play for sure. It gives you Altus access, and yeah, in this case, gives you um, the middle square. So right. Right. Um, yeah, I feel like that's probably the best move for her. She's kind of kind of feels a little bit like she's against a wall with this one because everything in this line kind of sucks. Unless Kata's just bluffing. But like, if Kata just prioritizes Altus, I mean, it's not a super crazy line to do, right? Yeah. Does Kata? No, I'm sorry. Does he typically like bluff like that, or is he just a go get the line kind of guy? He's pretty much uh, he's a pretty straightforward player, I would say. Damn. He's he's one of the players that has definitely pushed bingo lines way more than others. Okay. Gets the Knight Rider Glaive here, by the way, for a helper check. Um, but in this case, I do think he might be playing with that line a little bit. You know, go for tunnels and then maybe just leave it up to her to go for that Altus access. Moke sewers, you would you would need capital access on top of that, which means you would have to have two remembrances. Uh, right. For Pup, she has zero. Currently, Catalyst does already have one yes, with that Godric. Yeah. And in this case as well, by the way, um, having Godric's Great Runes will be really, really useful for Kata because if he pops a Rune Arc and has it active, he gets 40 bonus levels, which is right. uh, you know five in each stat. 
So he, his weapon options just skyrocketed pretty much. Any weapon that he finds, as long as he pops that rune arc, he gets to, you know, have access to either. So. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Uh, however, like, Pup still has Godric open for bow only. She doesn't have a bow, though. <laughs> <laughs> and we've seen with the bingo matches that finding a bow can be rough sometimes. Yeah. And finding arrows and all that um, can be difficult. But I don't know. I mean, we'll just see where the game takes us, I guess. I mean, uh, the arrows, to my understanding, I'm like, I'm like 99% sure aren't randomized. It's just the bows. So in this case, right. like, all they have to do is just yeah, find a suitable bow or crossbow in this case. You know, go ahead, check downstairs uh, at round table. You just need one stone sword key anyways for when you get the... Oh, what's it called? It gives you black key bolts. It's a it's a crossbow, but I forget what the name of it is. Crepus's bow, something like that. Whatever. Uh, you can okay. check that chest, and that will at least be a, a good check. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what Kata chooses to do. I mean, maybe he like I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he prioritizes the line. Maybe he doesn't. Like like you said, there is still a lot to do before Moog sewers and all that. Um, he needs a whole nother remembrance, which. Is there anyone really to prioritize? Honestly, um, I don't know. If I were in Kata's shoes here, I would just try and start taking off squares that are easy. I, I already right. have a bit of a pressure on the diagonal. Let me just go ahead yeah. and take away every easy square away from, from Pup in this case so that she can't really retaliate um, yeah. and then start looking for lines. Yeah, that's very true. Um... Uh, yeah, Puff could be calling the bluff, though, if he does choose to do that and kind of do the same thing and just do some easy squares. Like, yeah. the cave in Grotto, I think, is a good it's a good one to have. That's a pretty basic one. And Bog as well. Uh, does Renala drop a sorcery, or does she only drop a staff? Uh, Renala, so the Remembrance, those are completely randomized. So those in this case, it right? wouldn't be uh, yeah, staff or a sorcery. It would be okay. whatever Remembrance weapons or spells are out there. Okay, so there's not a huge reason to do Renala. Is mm, Renala bow only would suck so bad, huh? <laughs> I would hate to do that. It's not great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little tricky, especially with the students. Like, the phase two is not too bad because if you have Mighty Shot, you can stagger her out of uh, her all of her spells because uh, the Mighty Shot does, like, kind of... She has a very low poise uh, counter. Um, so anything... Attack wise, just yeah, shakes her out of her any uh, out of any spell that she's casting, so you can kind of play mm -hmm. around that. But phase one's pretty annoying. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, phase one is so bad with that. I wonder. I've never like rotted her or or anything like that. Can you just like rot her in phase one, and then as she's flying up, she's still taking damage? Uh, yes. However, the interesting thing is if you rot in phase one and she's in the bubble, she can't die in the bubble. So you have to actually pop. The students. Uh, okay. She can sit there with one HP in a bubble and have Scarlet Rod, but doesn't die. You have to have her on the ground to, to move her into phase two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> weird. It is. It is really weird. Yeah. It should. Yeah. She should just be able to get out. But okay. Anyway, here is Kata. He's got a tunnel. Okay. He's going that middle square. Ooh. He's he's stealing that easy square from uh, Pop and forcing her into. The two, the two altest ones, yeah. Potentially, yeah. He does get that kindred rot though, yeah. blasting him with the sauce. Gotta be careful to not get die here. That I as I hate kindred rot. They're yeah. so annoying. Yeah. Oh my god, they're so annoying, and they are insane snipers. Yeah, and then when you get too close, they have melee combos that are really annoying to deal with as well. So annoying. All right. Well. He took the other way. Don't blame him. Um, yep. But I hope he'll knock the ladder down. Sometimes you see some of these gamers not get that, like, shortcut ladder. Uh, and then it sucks a lot later on. <laughs> yeah, it's not... I mean, as long as they don't die to this ladder right here, it should be fine. He is quitting out just to make sure that he hasn't, doesn't have to deal with two Kindred of Rot. Because yeah, there is actually yep, one yep, yep. up the ladder and to the right. There's another one just sitting there waiting yes. for you. So then also you have two of them just, you know annoying with attacks so yeah yeah the tunnels are pretty rough for these guys okay there's the shortcut ladder nice 
Okay, it um, looks like uh, she's checking the weapons here. Another spiked club. She could dual wield spiked clubs if she really wants to. Or go for the Inquisitor's Candlestick, which is not a bad weapon. I've used that before. It's got fire damage on it. It is a spear. That'd be her best weapon right now for Somber, at the very least. Yeah, 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 that would be cool. Um, all right, so here is this with the Falling Star Beast. Honestly, really nice synergy with that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 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 he's... Kata's game is, is looking pretty good right now. Yeah, like I mentioned, Falling Star Beast with Tunnel and then Makar Tunnel. That could really yep. work out to having a nice two-for-one type of situation. He does also have the Spike Club here, but Falling Star Beast does not bleed. So Bonk damage is uh, like the only good thing here for this weapon. And also having oh, a decent yeah. amount of poise damage. Um, and it does look like that uh, Pup might be going for the same fight here. Yeah, unfortunately for Pup, this fight is so long that she'll probably waste a lot of time on it. Like, because I don't think she has more damage than... Uh, than Kata does. Yeah, yeah. However, if Kata does die, then it's good for her because it takes so long for him. But yeah, he seems to know the fight pretty well. It, it really depends. But like, yeah, like I mentioned, the hammer also has like really good poise. So, you know, you do three or four swings, you get a stagger. There yeah. isn't a lot of time for a Falling Star Beast to really screw you over and yeah. uh, make you die unless it does like one of the really heavy hitting attacks. Like the, uh, the tail swipe can be pretty devastating. Um... Yeah, and it's got some weird hitboxes. And here we go. Pup going all the way around to get the same ladder. Uh, has to make sure that she doesn't get aggro too hard. Does actually take... Uh, no, that is actually the worst situation. Pup gets attacked, wants to roll out of it, but then rolls off of the ledge that she just climbed up onto. Yeah. That is very unfortunate for her. Yeah, the one thing is if she does commit to this boss, uh, she will get a tunnel... So, I don't know if she'll contest that middle square. I mean, maybe she kind of has to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially if she already has this one. I guess we'll see how the fight goes for her. She could try and rush the Stone Digger troll in Limgrave as her second tunnel instead, instead of holding it on to till Makar. Um, that way, you know, she could possibly try and snipe it away from Kata if she really wants to. Uh, but yeah, this is already looking. Pretty much in the bag for Akata. Kata. He just has to go mm -hmm. for a couple more staggers here. And then we'll have Falling Star Beast in one tunnel done. Yeah. No healing now for Pup either. Ooh. All those Kindred of Rot really just poking at her the whole time. Maybe she's got it though. You know what? Maybe she's got it. Maybe she's really good at Falling Star Beast. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Here we go. Walking into the arena, waking mm -hmm. up Falling Star Beast from a nice slumber that, you know that really sucked if you're a boss you're just sleeping and someone just hits you on the head yeah you know disoriented you are when you wake up that's gonna be really <laughs> annoying it's like what the heck yeah is yeah and you're like dude i wasn't even doing anything yeah i wasn't even ready me? yeah, yeah. Where, where's the honor in that you're just smacking my head yeah dude um there you go. know like know. There, yeah, there it is. G oh, not yet, I guess. There you go. Not curse him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. GG's for Kata. So Pup sees it. Is she going to pivot? I think she will commit because she's already kind of halfway through it. Almost. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, she's already here, right? This is looking really, really tough for her. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You still kind of want to finish it out just because it's a tunnel, yeah. but also because it does give you a Somber 6, so it does help into the late game. If you do get a Somber weapon, having that Somber 6 does help. But she does die here because yeah. she doesn't have any healing. This is yeah. oh, really tough. unfortunate. It's not yeah. her fault. It's the damn bugs who got her on the way. Kindred of Rot, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but you know what I was going to say, though? So you have these bosses in these games who are, like, just sleeping. They don't They don't even bother you, and then you just attack them. Mm -hmm. But you have... There's that one boss in Lies of P, that one, like, weasel NPC who, um, who like, attacks you first. And then when you kill him, he's like, all I wanted was some food. And then you're like, dude, you didn't You didn't even ask me. You just attacked Oh, the first. survivor or whatever? Yeah. 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 So dumb. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are really silly. Yeah. Um, in this case, I don't know how I would go about this, to be honest, because 
if you don't have the tunnels, what would you go for next? Uh, honestly, I would just try and force me Altus access. That might be the best case scenario here. Yeah, so like, yeah, so Pup sees him get this middle square. What is she going to do? She's going for Altus access, I think. She's going straight to Slea Town here, possibly going for Slea Town skip into the first deck this half. Um, that way she can get red against Source Seal. Um, yeah. You know, that that's yeah. gonna definitely help her out here, for sure. Yeah, so so what's the best uh, Heroes Gravy thing? I, I saw that one that people seem to prioritize, the Red Wolf one. Is that... The, that the right? Heroes Grave? Yeah, 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 that seems to be the, the one that a lot of people go for, just because yeah. that does uh, um, seem to go through the quickest. A lot of the Heroes Graves, you have to do, like, these weird requirements to reach the boss fight. Yes, yeah. Um, Beside, so the only two I can think of right now are the Red Wolf one, where you have to do the chariots, or the other one is Double Crucible Knight. Which both... Which one are you going to pick, right? Which one are you going to pick Double Crucible Knight, or are you going to go for Red Wolf? You're always going to go for Red right. Wolf in that case. Um, yeah. The Black Knight Assassin one, you have to go and like get the Duelist in the sunlight, so you can, and then you have to kill the Duelist to activate the door, um, which takes way longer than just going to Mount Gelmir and doing the Red Wolf. Right. Um, so, um. yeah. Let's just point out, by the way, if there is one thing that Pup will do, it is be good at that skip, dude. She is so good at it. <laughs> like, yeah. if, if there's one thing you can rely on, she can do that skip. Very, very nice. Salia so, yeah, Town skip does seem to be in her blood uh, yeah. going for the first half here. And then Radigan's Source Seal. Uh, that is, by the way, yeah, the center square for Kata. This is huge for Kata. He's got, like, insane momentum now. He did go yeah. for that. I think he did go for that Stone Digger troll that I mentioned um, as his second yes, tunnel instead yeah, of Makar. Yeah. That way, yeah. you know, yeah, he can just secure that center uh, square and just go ahead now and do whatever he wants, pretty much. The board right now is his oyster. He has a lot of pressure um, looking at some of the weapon options. Uh, and then I'm assuming maybe going to go ahead and do, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't, yeah. He's kind of, Raya's he hand. Looks, he looks really happy though. <laughs> he looks like he's having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> yeah. He said he has a really good time playing bingo. So that just, uh, you know, that might be that too. Right. I don't know. But maybe, maybe he's like Aggie where he just has a smirk constantly on his face. So he just looks happy automatically, you know? Even though he's just he's just thinking, he's just, but maybe you never noticed I mean, that about Aggie. Yeah, he always has a smirk. Like he's like I don't know. It's like he's but he's just thinking. But he he always got like a like a smile on his face. Yeah, sometimes during the <laughs> sure. Sometimes, yeah. That's yeah, it's, it's hard to know what he's thinking during bingos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, Dude you're Teresa. yeah. There are some of these players who like they're so focused and they just have such a like a poker face that you sometimes you think their camera's frozen. Yeah, they're just yeah, they're just yeah. uh just thinking yeah. to themselves. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Some people have nice. uh you know RBF or whatever you call it, and some people have uh resting happy face. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's so funny, yeah. People that some people do. This is uh bosses that ride a horse, by the way, but also a nice weapon check. Uh-huh. So, let's see. Ooh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Nothing to sneeze at. Spinning Strikes plus eight Banished Knights Halberd. Oh, God. And Pup is still using her Spiked Club. Yeah, at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so, she's headed to... Uh... She got the first deck this half. She doesn't have the second one. Oh, yeah, she's on her way now. Okay, yeah. This is definitely the long way, though. Yeah, um, yeah, we haven't seen this very much this season. That's why I got a little disoriented there. Yeah, yeah, this is a uh, this is the one where you kind of like you're you're doing a lot of other prep on top of that. You know, you're doing the strength tier. You're grabbing yeah. uh, possibly golden vow on this way, uh, getting the physic. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there is some somber, some uh, smithing stones here too. I guess she was just doing the check. Uh, wait, sorry. Are so the shopkeepers? They are the only their weapons randomized, or is like literally everything in their shop randomized? No, just the weapons. Yeah, just the weapon. Okay. The fully okay, random cool. weapons too. There is the sleep pot recipe here. I don't know what she would need that for, but and she does have the resources for it. Kind of looks like she's getting it, maybe just in case. I don't know. 
Um, yeah, I'm not too sure either. It looks like Kata is going for deck this half now as well, going into Celia Town. Yeah, interesting that neither of them did Makar. I get why, because it's faster this way, but the synergy was definitely there a little bit at least. Yeah, but yeah, like I mentioned too, it's it's a little yeah. tough going for that whole tunnel precipice thing if it's a center mm -hmm. square, because um, yeah. it does take a while to even get there. Yeah. And doing Makar really early on in the match is really tricky if you don't have a good weapon. Right. If, uh, honestly, if you got that Banished Knight's Halberd uh, as one of your first weapon checks, I would have rushed Bakar with that 100%. That weapon is so good. Spinning Strikes is actually, in my opinion, a, a broken Ash of War. It is very powerful. Where do you get that in the vanilla game? You can't get it anywhere besides from Ed, uh, Edgar, I believe is his name, the dad that uh, you mm -hmm. meet at Castle Morn. He's the only one that drops it. Um, like when you fight him later on as the invader? Yep, yep. So either you can kill him at the yeah. castle when you deliver the letter from Arena, um, or you de yeah. kill him later on as an invader, but he's the only one that has that weapon. Interesting. Dude, I loved that quest. I was so invested. Oh my god. It's a... Yeah, some of the quests are actually uh, quite emotional too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do think yeah. uh, when it comes to like Elden Ring, like DS3... So, like, the one thing I, I do like about Elden Ring in that case is that uh, the quest lines are a bit more obvious. In yeah, DS3, they're, like, very hard to follow sometimes, um, where you kind of yeah. get lost on where, what to do next. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Um, all right, so there was Kata. Uh, nice and easy getting up here, getting the second half. And then I wonder if he'll just book it to Altus then and just finish it off. Yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure. He he probably could. I mean, he still has, he still needs one more remembrance for Moke Sewers. Does need one more remembrance. That's but right. um, he could definitely just try and force that diagonal as much as he wants to. Especially with a plus eight halberd, he could easily do a lot of the boss fights, especially for Nala. Like I said, spinning strikes and uh, OP Ash of War. Reason Renala, she will not do a, a single spell because he can just keep hitting her, hitting her, hitting yes. her. It will stagger her out of every spell that she does. Yeah. She has like no poise. Yep. So that would be yeah. a, a joke of a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I wonder if he would even consider Remembrance Boss Bow only just because he kind of has a little bit of time to work with here. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he doesn't really need to. I don't know. I wonder. I wonder if that's what he's thinking. Maybe, ideally, he would just rush uh, Renala, go for Altus. Because um, he knows that Pup is in the same position. And Pup... He doesn't know if she's killed Godric or not. Um, but, I mean, obviously he can assume that she hasn't because he has Nefeli Lu. Mm -hmm. So he knows that he's in the lead here for sure. I don't know. I'm, I wonder what she's thinking. I Yeah, I'm not too sure. I think she's just worried about the diagonal, which I would be as well. I'd be worried about the diagonal a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if she'll be rushing the diagonal or if she kind of is like, that diagonal is hopeless. I'm just going to hope that he's bluffing, which I don't know if she would be thinking that, but but I don't know. I don't know. Some people might be bluffing a, a such a late square like Moog or or Altus Grave. Like he could he could be doing anything at this point. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, okay, what do, you, what do I do now? Moke Sewers does take a while. Do I just maybe ignore it and force my own line instead? Is that yeah. a better idea? You know, what if I look at column four? It has Black Plague Kindred. Sure. Kind of sucks. But if I get that block on Hero's Grave, I could just bulldoze uh, column four instead and just not worry about Moke Sewers. Yeah, well, here is Kata with the five horse bosses. So, yeah, he is, he is leaving that a little bit. Yeah. Um... Don't blame him, honestly. This sometimes, is a little bit though, easier. Yeah. Sometimes I will say, when I used to play against players who I just knew for a fact that they were just better and faster than me, sometimes all you really can do is try and force your own square yeah. because you just you can't keep up with them. Um, not your own square, your own line, and kind of just like do something that might be a little more unconventional, but 
it's like it's like worked out for me before or almost worked out for me i wouldn't really say pup is like in that position because cat is not faster or better they're pretty equal but um but if you're a little bit behind like maybe if if she had progress on some other squares which she doesn't super have <laughs> um yeah there's nothing super fast here so she she seems like she's kind of going with the flow just getting some stuff done i mean that's all she really can do right well in this case also kata going for horse bosses is a really good idea because he um is pretty much prepping that block for row two just in case like yeah. what if she does get heroes graves you know then she's yeah. going to be uh kind of pushing that row two if she really wanted to um, but also yeah. that kind of promotes that diagonal uh, for him from top left to bottom right on top of that. So it's a good block, but also a good progression at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, nice nice calls for Kata. Um, so he has uh, two horse bosses, I think. Yeah, it's marked as one, but he has the night cab and he has the tree sentinel. Yeah. Um... Is it, are you the one marking those or do players mark those them, themselves? It's uh, all players. Okay. Yep. Player accountability. And, just, but they don't have, they don't have to, right? They, just they do don't have to. Own. No, they, but if okay. they miscount, like now I'm not at fault, you know, now it's not like, well, it's right, too hard right. to keep track of eight counts, four counts, five counts on these different yeah. squares, yeah, giving them the true, ability to be able to do that on their own. It's like, Hey, I give you the tool for it. But if you screw up now, like you can't be yeah. upset because I, you know, we give you tools to keep track right so yeah and you know what some people have complained about that sort of stuff like oh the the refs should mark squares but like that's kind of a part of bingo if you're like the par a part of bingo is if you guys both finish a boss at the same time who marks it faster you know what i mean yeah so people who complain about it kind of weird it's, it's like the name of the game <laughs> well it's it's that but it's also like if you like imagine yeah there's a close call and one of the refs marks it and then the players can just be like well my ref was just too close and it's gonna right. like open up this whole can of worms of like right. okay well now was the ref too slow do i have to rewatch it now now the ref is responsible for the player losing a match and like all this whole stuff like just have the players do it themselves so that way yeah. we have, like avoid like like really crappy scenarios potentially yeah you know so yeah that yeah. could be a huge hassle definitely the best this way yeah, 100%. And here's the thing, that the board is completely up to date for both players. So even if it's maybe delayed for us on our end, the board itself is up to date for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. And it's uh, in sync with everyone. So there isn't a delay on the board at all. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. I've seen complaints like, oh, this person didn't finish the boss yet and they marked the square. Okay. You guys think we're dumb here? There's refs, bro. The stream is delayed. <laughs> like, yeah, there's there's stream delays. Um, it's and then so also, silly. and then also, it's like some players just mark too slow. You know, we we had that last season a couple of times where some players were like, hey, the the square is done, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour it out first, and then I'll mark yeah. it. And then the other person's like, yoink, and they just grab it. Yeah. And then some player and some uh, some viewers are like, well, hey, that's not fair. The other person yeah. finished it first. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, but they didn't mark it yeah, right away. That's their exactly. own fault. You know exactly in parky's words uh sucks to suck uh, uh -huh. that's just uh how it is yeah i messaged aggie after that first match and i was like your chat's gonna tell you i said this about you but i i was really nice the whole time i swear <laughs> <laughs> um anyway what are we doing kata is an altus uh pop is an altus kata just uh arrived in altus as well no almost he will fight that tree boss though I think, yeah, I think he's going for this boss. nice calf here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Yeah, I don't blame him for what he's doing. His pro it kind of feels like he's he's thinking about that diagonal and he's taking his... He's he's on his way to it, but he's, uh, he's getting some stuff on the way that's just convenient, which is honestly pretty great. I think that this is really, really convenient for him. Um... The one thing I don't like here is Pop kind of rushing Hero's Grave. I know she has to go for the block here, but she doesn't yeah. really have a weapon to make that a bit of a you know a reasonable fight. She's going into Altus here with a, what seems to be a plus zero spiked club, and that's going to be really rough uh, versus the Red Wolf here. Um, uh, yeah, she, though she could be she could be confident in Red Wolf, and from what I've seen, this Hero Grave, uh, I've not. I don't really know the specifics myself, but from what I've seen the players do, it seems like their strats to get through the lava relatively easily, mm. easily. 
So yeah. it doesn't seem like if she knows what she's doing, I think it will probably be okay. Um, but she just left, so. Or maybe she's just prepping for it. That could be a thing as well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. she's grabbing rot grease here to maybe make the red wolf a little bit easier. Okay. That could be a situation as well. Or I don't know anymore. Oh, she's just teleporting out. Yeah, she's using rock grease here. Okay, interesting. Cool. Oh, okay, right. She couldn't she couldn't pour it out in the tunnel itself because she's been yeah. killed Falling Star Beast. Right. I forgot about that. That's my bad. This is a very brave play here from Pup, but this is the other problem is like, what if she dies um, to Red Wolf? Because this is a later game area. She has a, a plus zero Bloodhound Claws now. Which is better than the Spike Club uh, in this case, having Bloodhound Step, um, but also having then Rot Grease on that as well. But I don't know. This is scary. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes for her. I mean, it could it could go really well as well. Yeah. All right, and Kata is laughing. He's feeling good. Um... <laughs> He's got resting happy face going on right now. He's just uh, enjoying the game as it is, I guess. I, I mean, if, if I was a Kata spot, to be fair, I'd feel really good, too, if I'm being honest. I have got a strong diagonal. I've got two squares above my uh, opponent. Um, I'm about to have another mm -hmm. strong diagonal on the other way. Like, yeah. I've got a lot of pressure in my favor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have a lot of pressure uh, on the other player, you just immediately relax, and I do feel like... At most times, players start to play better when they're relaxed. Uh, just because it's like, okay, you know, I, I can kind of take my time on things. Less mistakes yeah. happen, you know, less bad yeah. calls happen. Um, but on the flip side, if you get too comfortable, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. I have a good lead. All of a sudden, you're making, oh. like, really bad calls. And you're getting you're just, like, false confidence type uh, situations mm -hmm. where it can flip on its back really, really quickly. So Yes. Um... Yeah, false confidence is definitely a big one in games like this with a lead. Uh, I will. I wouldn't say that's what happened last game. Zoodle played well to the end, but yeah. like, it, it we it is obviously possible to lose a big lead, um, yeah. just because that's how it works out, you know. Um, so so yeah, we'll see how this goes. Like, it, a lot could change based on an RNG incident, just the unlucky situation, weapon checks. You know, whatever. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, um, currently in Altus now. Just activates the grace and ports back right away. Wonder what he's thinking. And yeah, pop now in that hero's grave. That's a cool hat. What is that hat? It's like a Torley hat. It's like a. It's so, like shaped like a Hershey's kiss. That's not what the guy from uh, Radon's castle wears, is it? I don't. I don't, I don't think so. I don't... He's got some sort of jester outfit on. I don't know, but it looks funny. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny hat. I like the hat. Yeah, it is funny. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, the, the hero's grapes are so annoying to me. Like, these these big, like, the, the big rolling things are so, like, DS1, DS2. Like, we don't need it keep it out of the new games i think yeah the biggest frustration i had playing this game for the first time i'm deaf hold on sorry uh the first time playing this game for sure uh was catacombs and um heroes graves were probably the most annoying for me yeah yeah totally okay that was she she made her way through there very very nicely very clean they don't really seem too concerned with it at all. Yeah, if you have, like, quick step or bloodhound step and you can just go mm -hmm. through the lava, it's not too bad. Because, like, yeah. once you enter the lava, the chariot doesn't go that far anyways. So you can just take yeah, your yeah. time. Yeah, very, very nice. Okay, Kata going for Raya's hand here. So he's just threatening multiple lines. He's like, okay, I I've got column one. I've got the diagonal. I've got uh, road three in just a moment here. Um, how are you going to react pretty much to all these different lines now? That's a uh, that's a fair point. And here we go, Red Wolf here for for uh, puppery. Yeah, her damage is okay. It's not it's not horrible, but like it's not super great. But it's enough if you know the fight, which yeah. she does. 
Trying to see if she gets a bleed proc here soon. Uh, the dog does have pretty high resistance to pretty much everything, which is really annoying. Yeah, getting this though will be kind of a nice, oh nice, like breath of relief though. A little less, like she doesn't have to worry as much about that diagonal. She's got it blocked. She doesn't have to worry about sewer moog right now. Yeah. Um, that would be really good for her to get this one. Oh, taking a lot of damage though. Gotta be careful. Okay. There we go. Blue attack. Has to be careful. I would be a bloodhound step here. Very, very nice. The good attack. This is always a great attack. Uh, if you can get close enough to the red dog, the attack will never hit you. You can just like stand there and wait and normally go for like a charged R2 for like, a, a really nice punish. Does take the uh -oh, full sword uh -oh, attack. Has uh -oh. to be really careful here. Goes for a okay. heal. That's nice that that didn't kill her though. Yep. Lionel armor at its finest. Stopping her from dying. Oh okay. my god. <laughs> Drinks again here. Has to be careful. Does too early of a roll. And here we go. This is going to be on the square here for uh, Kata on the board talking to Raya right now. There we go. There's the bleed proc. She gets nice. the red wolf. That's a Beautiful. hero's grave. Okay, good, good, good. Pup. Nice block. Yeah. And then Kata going to go ahead and claim that Raya's hand of Volcano Manor Square. Okay, so what is Pup thinking now? She can kind of go worry about some other stuff. Lanciax is there. Garonk is there. I think she's going for mm, Garonk right away. I would go for Garonk, yeah. Lanciax is a later kind of thing. Not a super, super easy square. The problem is uh, you're doing you're doing Goronk here with a plus zero Bloodhound Claws and maybe Rot Grease. Um, right. That's horrendous because this boss, or not boss necessarily, this NPC, he's really tanky mm -hmm. and annoying, and it's a small arena. That's going to be tough. I don't know. Yeah. I will say, though, like, some of these bosses like Garonk or BBK used to be a or at least it feels like they used to be scarier squares but now the players just have so much practice mm -hmm. that I don't really think any of them would be too scared of any of the, them right like especially if you've speeder in the game or whatever you have a lot of experience with Garonk with Malekith um especially with Bleed I I I mean it's not the easiest boss ever but I think she's gonna be okay yeah uh with rot grease it shouldn't be too bad the problem is just making sure that you get the dodges off and uh, actually get the rot proc before it wears off as well i do have to say though compare oh yeah la. that's where you gotta be careful that is a lot of damage yeah um so the arena is so bad yep especially with those pillars being up um the one thing about Elden Ring compared to like Lies of P, for example, is that the the mm -hmm. grease at least very lasts longer. I feel like in Lies of P, the abrasives oh, just, yeah. they, they're they're so short time wise. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true. Um, okay, so Kata just used Godric's Great Rune. He's got that going. What is this weapon he's he has? Do you see? Uh, um, he's using uh, the Royal Greatsword, which is Blythe's weapon. Okay, beautiful. A royal greatsword looks like that'd be kind of sick to have right now. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Just... The Ash of War is not too bad either. It's got frost on it. Yeah, any sort of greatsword is just all reliable, you know, like a good stagger, a good damage. Yeah. Um, it's usually sh obviously strength and you can two hand it usually. Like it's not the most um, intense on stats. Oh, darn. That's Her damage tough. is not great there. That sucks so bad. Such an endurance fight, this one. That it, it is a plus zero Bloodhound Claw. Yeah, that's yeah. that's where I mentioned. Like, the Rot Grease is nice, but at the end of the day, it's not going to carry you to finish yeah. this fight. And she just feels way too pressured to go for this square right now as well because yeah. we're currently 52 minutes into the match. She doesn't have really a weapon to kind of compete uh, yeah. with Goronk or Lanciax. It might sound tough, but go for some more prep, maybe. You know, yeah. go, go find a different weapon that maybe works better for you and not just try and f start to slam your head against the square just hoping that you get it. Yeah. Because you're going to lose yeah. more and more time, you know? It's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like, if you feel it, you're like you're in a place of hopelessness, sometimes it's just like, like, if you feel like you're going to lose anyway, you might as well just try and do what will get you some sort of progress, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know. Looks like she is switching to the Spike Club, which I, I believe is yeah. the right call here, to be honest. 
because uh, in this case, uh, the Spike Club does deal a, a, the similar amount of blood damage. Um, mm -hmm. But also, it is a hammer, so she has a little bit better poise damage than she's going for right. claws. Uh, does die here, though, again, which is really tough. So. All right, well, Kata is going to get a weapon upgrade. And what is that, 26 strength? Okay. Um, oh, man, an upgraded greatsword. That is hard to compete against. Yeah, Blast's weapon is not bad, for sure. Um, he just has to make sure that he has this, uh, the stats for this one. It has oh, 51,000 runes left, so he should be he's close. He's got it to plus 6, though. That is nasty, dude. That's a lot of damage, for sure. Yeah, I guess the Int is the problem. He doesn't have much strength either, though. But, uh, I wonder if he plans on getting any of the tiers. I, I I, mean, if he wants to put his money into everything else, yeah. It looks like he might go grab the strength tier and just two-hand it. He has the... He has the time for it, right? So This um, is definitely Garonk, looking sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Gronk is Gronk is tough. Sometimes I'm like, what Elden Ring is so mean, why would they put this hard boss in a tiny room? But like he's a he's a friendly NPC here, right? Like Yeah, we're attacking him. him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do find yeah, it hilarious I, still though too that he just drops two thousand runes when you kill him. Like he's so hard and he's so yeah. tanky, and then when you kill him, he's like, Oh yeah, here's two thousand smack runes. That's all you get. You're like, oh, Wow. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, he was just chilling, and he was, like, nice before. Like, he was offering you things. So you're the bad guy here. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, here's Kata with the five horse bosses. Still kind of chilling. Like, he's not going for Lance X. I don't know. I thought, yeah, good that he's not. I thought he was for some reason. Um, she's got the stagger. Again, I, I think that someone like Pup knows the fight. It's just more like when it's an endurance fight, it's just like, oh, it's tough. Any sort of fight like that is tough. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely is. But also, you know, nerves and being in a bingo match. You yeah. Know, 54 right. minutes in, you don't have a weapon. You don't have stats. And you still have to go for these really heavy blocks. It, it gets very stressful. Yeah, she looks like she's moving, though, I think. You know, you know what's a silly endurance fight to think about also? Um, mm. Godric with fist only. Like, it's so easy, but sometimes if you do it right away and you don't have health and you don't have heals, like, you'll just, I don't know, get overconfident, not patient enough, yeah. and die. And you're just like, oh my god, that sucks so bad. Yeah, or um, you're doing like, uh, what is it, uh, like Renala as well. If you do that yeah. too early and you're like, oh, I could, I could just do the four summons uh, square yeah. and then you start yeah. dying to summons right away. You're like, oh, never yeah. mind. Okay. That's a little brutal. Um, yeah. Okay. But she has pivoted. Good for her. Is she going to Lancey X? Uh, I, th I don't know what she's going for here right now. Currently in Kaled going for, I have no idea. She might be going for Lancey X, which... Maybe she likes more. I don't know. She. What else could she be doing here? Um. I guess she. I don't know. I don't. I think that's. I think that's what she's. What she's looking at. Is there? What are the bow um checks like? Um. You have the bow check in round table. You have a bow check in storm veil. Okay. You have a bow check. As a remembrance, uh, you have a bow check in Liurnia, actually in Raya Lucaria itself, the full moon crossbow. That's a really weird one to grab, though. Like, that's uh, a bit of a runaround, but you can still do that. Um, yeah, I wonder if she would ever try and consider that for that corner square, because she does have Godric open, which is nice, at least. Yep. She does grab the Rod Grace here, and it's going for the Meteoric Ore Blade check. So this, this is where you normally get the Meteoric Ore Blade, for anyone that is curious. Uh, you just open up this door, and there's a chest there. But in this case, it will just be a Katana check, which is definitely still a good idea. Looks like Rivers of Blood here, uh, okay. which is not a good option, but you know it is still better than what she's currently rocking. She could go for the uh, Assassins. Catacomb is currently being... You know, I think her screen is bugged. As they would say, uh, <laughs> it's kind of uh, dying to Kindred of Rot there. Yeah. Oh, and this just—it sucks into to be in this position because, like, 
Kata just like got her in this corner and she's just like, well, what? Like, you know, she can either do that route where she hits her head against the wall, tries to get the blocks, because she doesn't know that he's not going for them. Or like, you can do that route where it's like, I'm just gonna ignore everything he's doing and try and just get my own stuff. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Which I do think is the better strat because in a time of hopelessness, you just like, you might as well just, you know, do what gets you going a little bit. <laughs> yep, and we currently have Garonk here again on Pup's screen, going for that Rot Grease Bloodhound Claws, hoping that this works out this time. And uh -huh. looks like that and now Catalyst is going for a two. And if Catalyst yep. gets this, oh my lord, look at that damage difference. Currently already done 1,200 <sighs> yeah. damage uh, on just two swings. Goes for a third swing here, uh, 660 per charged R2. Already has more damage on Garonk. Um, yeah. This is definitely looking pretty bad mm -hmm. here for Pup. If this is a, a, a snipe um, on Kata's side, I think Pup uh, is going to be looking at a pretty huff, tough uh, Lanciax if she does try to go for that. Yeah, this this Garonk is looking nice. I, I like a strength weapon against him because the staggers are just really great. What's the... Uh, what is that? Uh, Ash of War, sorry. Uh, which one? The From the Royal The Greatsword? Wolf's Assault. Yeah, so this is Blythe's uh, special weapon. Yes, so in this yeah. case, you're like jumping in the air, and then your mm -hmm. your sword turns into ice, and then you slam down, and then there's like a little bit of like a frost attack. Yeah, it's, it's got a good frost buildup. Oh, Kata just getting a oh, unfortunate. pocket yeah. sand straight into the face. Oh, God. Oh, God. Damn. But yeah, yeah, it's Pup pretty is, cool. Like, she's kind of doing some nice. I mean, the damage isn't fantastic, but he's a. Uh, she's getting him down. She like. I'm not gonna say anything, but you guys know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Guess the instant reposed here. The rot is doing its job. Mm -hmm. Rot garonk garonk with the rock. Oh, uh, the rot. Jeez, that's hard to say. Okay. Uh. I mean, I technically, Garonk is a dog. So a it, dog? Right, Malekith is too, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, well, Malekith that, is... That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I say that, yeah. Cause yeah, 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 yeah. So he's technically a butter dog, right? A butter dog? Why would he be a butter dog? Yeah, ca oh, because of the rot, but... Because he's a rot well, dog. He, dog yeah, he's a rot. a rot dog, not yeah. a butter dog. What if you... Like, yeah, I, there's no butter in the game. That'd be kind of fun, though. If you could put butter on Garonk. Yeah, that'd be so funny. There should be a square for that. You should add that in. Get the <laughs> butter and put it on Garonk. Just that the square is just called Butter Dog. <laughs> just find <laughs> any dog in the game and put butter on it. <laughs> I started putting butter, uh, butter on the uh, turtles. And uh, Elden said because they're considered dogs. Go to Elden Pope. This is, this is a great conversation. Yeah, we're just buying time, you know? Watching a good old Garonk fight on both screens. Yeah... Pop is. I'm really impressed. The she's doing pretty well, all things considered. No, why did I say it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to heal. She has four flasks. Okay, there we go. She's just really being patient. Oh, this is so bad because Kata died, but he yeah. is already back and caught up. Yeah. Gets the repose tier. This is looking really good for Kata right now. Yeah. Um... Another instance of pocket sand would come in handy here for Pup. And there's a stab, swipe, swipe, and down slash. Yep, oh, she... Nice charge her too. There is pocket sand, but nice roll here from Kata. One more R2 should do it. If Even an R1 should do it. There we go. Yeah. Right, nice. Oh, man. Like, that's that's really good for Kata. That was a very nice and clean fight, but, like, on Pup's end, that fight that she, like, the one that she's on right now, this attempt, she was so patient. Yeah. So good. That's tough. Really unfortunate for her. That's tough. That's really tough. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's like, if, um, even if you can't slam your head as against the square, if you don't have weapon, weapon optimization in this yeah. case, you are going to possibly lose that square. And we're looking at a potential Lance X here from uh, Kata. I don't know. So, uh, does Kata like Lanciax? I feel like most players don't, right? Uh, he's making his way there. It looks like he's definitely going for it. He's going right, the, right, but like, the way around. 
Is he a is he a CX enjoyer? I don't think anybody is. No. I, I, I don't think I don't think a single person on the roster is like, you know, Lance X, people pog. You know, most yeah. of them are just like, uh, why? That is the uh, the question I get um, whenever they <laughs> yeah, see that. Yeah. It's just why. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard too. All the players are like, bro, why is this? Why is this square on here? I don't know. Yeah, but I think that's like a good thing. Like you want squares that are kind of like that, where players aren't looking forward to it because. Those are the squares where you're going to get the most, uh, I, I think, interesting content because no one really yeah. wants to do it. So they kind of like learning on the fly, you know? Yeah. Do you ever um, wish you put a spell back in the game? No, no, I kind of get it. Like, I mean, we, were, we barely even see Fia's champs, and Estelle is even yeah. farther than Fia's champs. So, yeah. like, I don't really see a reason to even have that uh, on the on the board, to be honest. Yeah. I love Estelle, but the run there is just so long. It's, it's so long. When I was first learning Estelle in Season 1, I was like, Really? I have to do all this in yeah. one bingo game? No, yeah. dude. It's way too far. It's way too yeah, far. It's, it's really, not worth really it. Far. Um, so, so what do the standings look like if either of these players win? Because they're both currently like the top, right? Yeah, I think currently Akata is one and Pup is two. In this okay. case, uh, if Kata wins, he, he has a record of six to one, I believe. Six wins and one loss. Mm -hmm. And uh, then for Pup, she would be ending at 4-3. No, 4-2. Okay. She has a match tomorrow against MPT, so she'll be at 4-2. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, then, yeah, depending between MPT and Pup, uh, how that match goes, we'll decide who gets seed 3 in that case. Because in this case, Bushy then... If Kata wins this, I think Bushy is then C2 because he has four wins, one tie, and two losses. Mm -hmm. So that tie came into play where he gets then the second seed. Huh. So tomorrow's games matter a oh, lot yeah. for Pup, right? And NPT. And NPT. Interesting. Uh, but if NPT wins both of his matches, then he is technically 5-2. and two? Okay. So then Bushy would drop to... Pretty much, though, if, like... Pretty much Kata winning this, I think it guarantees Bushy a spot. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Yep. And then MPT, depending on if he wins one or if he wins both of his matches, will de de decide the placing. Okay. If if Bush, uh, if MPT wins his match versus Bree but loses against Pop, then it comes down to head-to-head. -head. Which they both tied, and so then we'd have to come up with possibly a, a different tiebreaker in that case. Mm -hmm. um, but if MPT just wins both of his matches tomorrow, then it's going to be Kata, MPT, and Bushi in top three. Dude, just by the way, Kata is melting Lanciax. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. This is a really great fight for him. This damage is so good. Like, yeah, we were just talking about how no one likes this boss. It's a bad square, blah, blah, blah. But, like, Kata does not really feel that right now. He is doing so well. Yeah, it's a lot of damage for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Lanciax is necessarily weak versus magic, but it does seem like that the magic is really, like, going in. Yeah. I hate that move. That move is so annoying because like the slam down is really annoying because uh, if it hits you, uh, there's a lightning strike afterwards. So annoying. So even if I you hate... roll it sometimes, but you roll against the hand, you still get lightning striked afterwards. Dude, the lightning dragons, oh my god, they're so annoying. Especially in like a rando when they're scaled up higher. Oh god, I hate it. Yeah. Yeah, this will be a bingo for Kata here. Really mm -hmm. soon. Just a couple more hits. This will be column one bingo. Yeah, just a lot of unfortunate stuff uh, for Pup. Yeah. Like, eh, yeah. Boom, boom. There we go. Yeah, that is GG's. Is. Yeah, nice work for Kata. Yeah, I mean, unfortunate for Pup, it just started in a way where she was just, like, locked into a corner, and, yeah, not really much she could have done with what, like, it just worked out that way. Yeah.
That was a uh, that was a, a great display though from Kata though showing yeah. board presence and showing mm -hmm. how to like play with an advantage and everything. Uh, yeah. That Gorong snipe was devastating for sure, but yeah. uh, overall yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. great from from both players though too. Yeah, Kata is so fast, dude. He yep. is. I would be scared to play against him. <laughs> He's very good. He's very very good for sure. He is really really good. Um, as we have seen though, another thing that matters a lot in this season two aside from skill is just rng weapon checks like you could be the best player in the world against the worst player in the world but if they have a plus nine and you don't then you know what i mean well here's the thing though is that pup did check the same merchant that kata did kata committed to the blithe weapon pup saw the same weapon but said no to that no. one so that's the thing like pup and kata both checked mm. the same merchant but he was like you know what this is the only somber weapon that i really like and i can kind of work with yeah. and pup was like i'm sticking to smithing um so this is, this is yeah. where you know just kind of dealing with the somber weapon to kind of make the best out of it really helped out yeah. kata in that case interesting all right let me bring in catalyst here first gg's kata six to one in the overall record how's it feel good sir Thank you. This match was ass. What is this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was uh, generated. Yes. Yes. Very well done. Yeah. But um, I mean, you know, I'm glad that I got the 6-1. I'm glad to be, you know, seat number one, of course, for the finals. There was no pressure today because I knew that I was guaranteed top three. So I just, yeah, I wanted to have a fun match. And <laughs> unfortunately, this, this was just not good. This was just a terrible seed. Uh, was it terrible in weapons or terrible board? Like both? What what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, so I think the board was actually quite nice, especially there were some squares that I like doing early. Mm -hmm. um, so there was like quite a bit of, I want to say, playmaking ability in the early game, right? Like the Kaelid play could have been pretty good with early Falling Star Beast and Tunnels, or like do you go Godric first? Of course, there's the Cave and Grotto synergy with Bok Needle, so I thought the early game was pretty interesting, but the weapon seed was just really, really bad, yeah. Um, I, I feel like I checked almost, you know, almost everything that was on the way, um, and even a little bit outside of the way, and we didn't get any of the any of the classic weapons that we're used to, so I ended up yeah. using this weapon. I don't even know what it's called, but I mean, it actually kind of slapped Royal Greatsword, but yeah, yeah, it took a while for me to get it going. Did you use yeah, the Ash of War at all, by the way, from the Blythe weapon? Because I don't think I saw it no, come out no, a single time. No, no. I, was, yeah. I don't know what it does. So, like, it's like with Lion's Claw the other week, right? Like, I'm not yeah. familiar with it, so I just don't use it. <laughs> That's right. fair. That's fair. Yeah, it's it's not a bad weapon. I mean, it, it creates frost uh, on bosses, but mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, it's uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's nice to see uh, trying out a, a different weapon. We, I don't think we have seen anybody use the Royal Greatsword yet, so it was nice to see it in action. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, overall, um, when it came to the the board, by the way, uh, was there a specific line that you were kind of looking at, or you kind of just the... Uh, I, I I think both of you saw the synergy between Godric, Nephili Lu, and restoring Godric's Great Rune. But beyond that, was uh, there anything else that you're kind of aiming at to push out? Yeah, so definitely that synergy was the obvious play there. Um, after that, like the Tunnel Falling Star Beast play, I thought was really good. And then I was thinking I would just see where it goes from there. I mm. saw row three. Like that was kind of my backup right if lanciax didn't work out because you got ever jails and you have urchi avatars and sacred flask seven and then there's scar seals on the bottom as well so there was a big potential for weeping play and you don't need the strongest weapon for weeping so if i wasn't able to set up a good weapon and i couldn't kill gurank and lanciax i probably would have gone for o3 gotcha okay yeah that weapon damage was so good on gurank dude like yeah yeah that wasn't bad. Yeah, we can talk about we could talk about that with um pup, but yeah, it was it was a close one almost, and then the damage just took over. Yeah, no, it was it was really really strong for sure. I agree. Yeah. Uh, it was nice to see though. Uh, it's it was really nice to see bingo matches where uh, weapons being used that we haven't seen all season. So. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really I'm glad really nice. that at least I got to show that off. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, uh, let me bring in a pup here real quick as well. Uh, GG's pup, welcome in. Hi pup. GG's. Um, looking at the the match as a whole, uh, it was very tough. You know, you had you had some, uh, I would say, some bad RNG moments uh, in your in your match um, that didn't really work out. Especially the whole Fongster Beast situation in that tunnel was pretty tough. But overall, how do you feel about the match and 
Uh, like, is there anything specific that you might take into your match tomorrow with MPT? Um, I think the big thing for me is that I'm just kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't trust myself that it could beat Fallen Star Beast. Mm. Because I was thinking about going for it right away, and I would have guaranteed gotten it if I had gone for it when I wanted to, but I just was scared of not being able to beat it. And then I did go for it, and it was pretty close, right? And yeah. it was pretty... Like, it just showed me that I could have just done it. <laughs> and I practiced that fight so much, so I'm just like, I'm just annoyed that I didn't trust in my own ability enough i guess and that would have changed the match a lot yeah mm. i got you i got you it was also honestly kind of a blessing disguise by the way that you didn't talk to nefeli lu completely so that you couldn't actually summon her for the fight and you pivoted off of that because kata was already in the fight itself so mm. technically you not being able to summon her so you just went and did something else actually worked in your favor in that situation yeah. um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, uh, when it came to the weapon options, by the way, you did see the Royal Greatsword the way Kata did in that beach merchant shop, but he didn't go for it. Was there a reason why? Just, like, too, too stat-heavy, or...? I just didn't realize it, honestly. Okay. I didn't realize it, uh, that it's, uh, yeah, I didn't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just completely missed it. Yeah, that's another thing. My bad. Yeah, so, honestly, just from the start, like... I really don't blame you because, like, literally that double square um, that Kata got initially that you were trying to get, like, kind of put you in a, a corner and then the middle square, obviously you're like, oh my god, a hero's grave or Moog, or, and then it's like, oh my god, Garonk or Lanciax, like, uh, I like the pressure and just how, oh, uh, it's just, like, really unfortunate squares yeah. left over mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for whoever didn't get that initial one. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you played well, all things considered, but, you know, it's just one of those things where I guess the first thing just really mattered that much. Well, I mean, I think that didn't even matter as much as the Falling Star Beast. Like, I think that basically decided it because if I had just gone for it when I wanted, um, I, I would have gotten the center square as well. Like, basically, whoever got Falling Star Beast gets the center square, right? And, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, that that literally would have released, relieved pretty much like almost all my pressure that I had this whole game. So it's like, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, really annoyed at myself for that, but it happens. And Kata played really well, so no shame to losing to him. And, yeah. Yeah. One good thing. You, that, I, I have oh, a hold on. I have. I just have a quick question. But what did you kill the Ultra Splinter Hero's Grave guy with? Um, I used uh, Blood on Claws plus zero. <laughs> In no way, you're a beast. So you don't <laughs> trust yourself to kill Falling Star Beast, and you go for Ultra Splinter Hero Grave with plus zero claws. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's why I'm so annoyed at myself. Yeah. I'm like, I know I can do this shit, and I'm like. Uh, insecure or something and don't go for it it's when fine. literally it's i could have just done it easy mm -hmm. and i don't know yeah oh well <laughs> it is what it is lesson for tomorrow it's fine yeah for sure for uh, sure i but just want to add pop that garong fight the last one i know you saw how close you were but like you dude i like i know you didn't get the square but that last fight like you were it was really, really well done considering your damage. And mm -hmm. you would have had that if Pup, if uh, Kata didn't have the damage that he had. Because he went in way after you and just kind of mm. like melted Gronk a little bit. <laughs> Still very well played Kata, but like Pup, you were just very patient with it considering your damage. Um, you, you can be proud of that. I know you didn't get the square, but it was a very well done fight. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a great match to watch. Even uh with how the board was playing out it was just very fun to watch both of you kind of tackle these uh different objectives uh in like very different ways um uh, and uh, just seeing what would happen next it was just a very entertaining uh match overall um so uh kata ggs man uh moving on into the finals you. because you're seed number one uh congrats to that dude we will see you in the finals Cheers. appreciate it um and pup we will see you tomorrow for your final match versus mpt yeah uh, oh, best yeah. of luck to you there. You're going to do great. Don't worry about it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys uh, next time, okay? Thanks so much for playing. I really appreciate you. Thank you. GG. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.